Hi there, welcome back to Vision Heart Blog. This is the second installment. In the last blog, I was talking about um, Gerhard Richter and his view of looking at the world through multiple points of view, and in only in that way, to paraphrase him, only in that way by looking simultaneously in several different ways from several different angles will we get really uh, the beginning look at what reality actually is. Now, we're not going to be talking so much about reality and the definition of reality. That's for another time. But what we do want to look at is that multiplicity of several different points of view and how that was going, that's going to relate to what we're talking about in the future. One of the interesting stories that came out of my time in India uh, about that, which is uh, something I wanted to share, was a really, really uh, wonderful little story about a group of blind men who were exposed to an elephant for the first time. And the definitions that came out of, and these were all very intelligent, very scholarly, very learned men, um, but they were blind. So when they were first exposed to an elephant, one had a hold of a trunk, one had a hold of the ear, one was along the side of the elephant, and one was at the back feeling the tail of the elephant. Each one of them were very adamant about what an elephant actually was and their description of an elephant. The first one said it was a long, tube-like thing, very flexible, very similar to a snake, and it blew wind. Um, that was his definition of an elephant. The second sage or gentleman argued with me, said, no, 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 you have no idea what an elephant is because it's actually a long, flat, very flappy, diaphanous thing. It's very leathery and so on, and it moves back and forth. It's a very, very wide, very flat thing. That is definitely the elephant. I have a hold of it right here, and I can tell you, sir, this is an elephant. The one along the side said to the first two, you are completely wrong. You have no idea what you're talking about. It's flat, it's long, it has a few hard bumps underneath. I think there's something underneath in sequence, something like it would feel like it lug along my side, but it's very big and it's very leathery and it's very flat. The man at the back said, you are all wrong. You are all so wrong. The elephant is a long, very narrow little thing that whips around and you have to watch out for it because it will hit you in the face. It's, 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 like a, it's almost like a whip. And these men argued and argued and argued and none of them could agree about what an elephant was. And I think with all the different religious, scientific, social views, that we've come up with over time, they are all these gentlemen holding on to different parts of the elephant, and none of them has grasped the whole elephant. So in a sense, Richter's view is all of the gentlemen realizing that they were all holding on to part of the elephant. And this is what I think, as simple as that little analogy is, is I think that's something that we all need to be very close, pay very close attention to, something that we need to understand. One of the things that came out of my trip to India when I was 27 years old was experiencing what I had learned, what I had grew up to learn, what I'd been taught, which was fundamentally true, unshakably true, unquestionably true, didn't hold water at all in India. In fact, some of the things, some of the concepts that I had, some of the uh, protocols of behavior and so on. They didn't even have a concept for this in India. They had other concepts, other ways of looking at things and so on. And this is one of the things that Westerners who go to India, out of my observation, what I saw, I saw a lot of Westerners lose their minds, lose their marbles in India because your culture runs smack into their culture and unless you are willing to let go, to give some ground and let go and accept that what you've been taught, what you've learned and what you've always believed is circumstantial, is relative and is conditioned, if you're not able to accept that, if you are someone that must have a solid foundation of of a, of a definition of reality, you're going to have a very hard time when you come up against something that doesn't agree with you. And this is where we get fundamentalism. And we need to look at fundamentalism these days because 
obviously the dangers of what's happening in the United States, in the Midwest, what's happening with Donald Trump, what's happening with fundamental Islam, and so on. Not that any of these, I'm not condemning any either of these, I'm not condemning North American or American Christians in particular, or condemning Islam in any sort of way, because that would just be absolutely ignorant. That's not seeing the whole elephant. There's a lot more there. So, but this is something we need to look at. We need to look at, each of us need to look at, and this is what I got out of being in India, was that, was being able to shift gears, to go from a trunk to an ear, to a side, to a tail, and so on, and understand how much richer it is when we actually see multiple different views, and so on. If we can't do that, if we can't accept and open ourselves up to at least understanding another part of the elephant, we're dead. We're dead as a world because now the world is a world culture and it's going that way very quickly. And in reaction to that, you have people who are threatened, who can't accept multiple views of the elephant, people hanging on to their trunk or their tail or their ear, screaming that the other ones are wrong. Okay, we had that privilege over several hundred years, over, over a millennia or two, when our cultures really only met each other when they fought each other out of some ignorant understanding or misunderstanding of what the other was about. So we had nationalism, which is one of the grandest forms of ignorance there is, whacking up against other nationalities and so on, and creating chaos, death on an unprecedented scale all through history. If we are unable to see other parts of the elephant, this is what we're in for. But now we have a global culture, and yet we're retaining those old archaic views of the elephant. I'm still hanging on to my trunk, you're still hanging on to your ear, someone else is hanging on to their tail, and so on, and we have to learn to step back and see the old elephant. A global culture will not permit us to exist much longer on this planet if we are not able to step back and see the elephant. In fact, I think that's what I might just call this blog, seeing the elephant, seeing the whole elephant. So this is, ties in with what Richter was saying, as we can't see reality from any one single point of view. And I think this is important. When we come out of this, what we're gonna get out of this is then, or what connects to this is religion versus spirituality and so on. And then we already touched on fundamentalism. And so we're going to be looking more in future at how to step beyond hanging on to your elephant, learning maybe perhaps how to see, or at least understanding the communication that's coming down the other side here, where I'm holding on to the trunk and I'm listening to the man who's got a hold of the ear, and he's listening to the one who's got a hold of the side, feeling the side of the elephant. And we need to listen and we need to understand, hey, maybe this person has something. Maybe this point of view over here is something that's actually going to be beneficial to me. Perhaps I'm not seeing the whole elephant. We need to see the whole elephant. So until next time, thank you so much, and I welcome your suggestions and your comments. Cheers, have a good day.